Ooh, what's good, Commanders fans? Nothing's good at the moment, really. Um, but I, I'm not going to act like this is the end of the world. Is it disappointing? Is it underwhelming? Yes, for Ben Johnson to give the Commanders that call, to give Adam Peters that call while they're mid-flight on the way to uh, Detroit to basically say that he's going back to the Lions. That was a gut punch for sure. And then now this is a double gut punch with uh, Mike McDonald. The Seahawks have announced that they have hired uh, Mike McDonald as their head coach. They are, they basically, yeah, they're, they're, the deal is, is, is basically done. He hasn't signed the paper yet, but yeah, that's it. And that that's a young, innovative mind. Yeah, so Adam Schefter tweeted out, a youth movement in Seattle Seahawks are expected to hire Ravens as a defensive coordinator. Mike McDonald as their new head coach. Lee sources tell ESPN they're still finalizing the deal, but Seattle has this man at 36. McDonald now becomes the NFL's youngest head coach. So they flew him back out, man. Or they they flew they they flew. I want to say they flew to Baltimore again to meet with Mike McDonald. So in person because they were not able to do it before, but uh, they flew out after you know after the loss and they sealed the deal. They got it done. And the thing is now. It's kind of looking at the situation too. Like Mike McDonald made the decision between us and the Seahawks, and that, and that was it. And the Seahawks situation, it kind of, it, I'm not gonna say it's a better situation, but you do have an established quarterback in Geno Smith. You do have DK Metcalf. You do have uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. You do have um, Tyler Lockett, um, Kenneth Walker, the running back. So they already have pieces. They have um, Quandre Diggs. They have uh, Devin Witherspoon. So they already have an established roster, way more than what we do. So he wouldn't necessarily have to go in and rebuild. They kind of are. They basically are in playoff mode. So he could be looking at it that way. But the the last uh, candidates that are available are Anthony Weaver, um, Anthony Weaver from the Ravens, the defensive line coach, Dan Quinn, of course. And uh, some people are saying Mike Vrabel, but I don't think there's any interest in him at all. And then Bobby Sloak being out of it, too. Him going back definitely is disappointing as well. Um, I'm trying to think who else, who are the other other candidates out there, too. But, yeah, Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, I know that's, that's the most popular name out there. I'm not I'm, – I wouldn't be – I would, I would be disappointed in it. But at the same time – uh, Aaron Glenn, Anthony Weaver, Dan Quinn. That those are the, those are the three guys that are really really up up there for the uh, coaching candidates for the Commanders right now. And of course, Mike Vrabel. Nobody interviewed him, but you know that's a name to look at too. But Ian Rappaport and some of the guys from NFL Network earlier said this morning. Dan Quinn seems to be a real strong candidate. He impressed in interviews, and Anthony Weaver really made a strong impression there uh, in his interviews as well with the Commanders. So one thing I'll say about Dan Quinn, he does feel like a Ron Rivera hire. Uh, went to the Super Bowl and lost. Went to the playoffs after, and then after that went seven to nine, seven to nine, just like Ron Rivera does, and then went zero and five and got fired in the middle of the season. So it's, it's imperative that they find a good offensive coordinator. Anthony Weaver was the associate head coach with the Ravens. Did coach with the Texas Tech JJ J. Watt. Tech, uh, I mean, did coach JJ uh, Watt. Did coach Jadavion Clowney. So he has a good resume there. Had a good re run defense last year. Had a good defense overall last year with Mike McDonald. 2022, they had a good defense as well. Number two ranked third down defense as well. And he had a big part in hiring Todd Moncton, uh, the offensive coordinator. That's in his bio. I mean, you can have your debate on that because they didn't run the football really at all against the Chiefs. And they just look like they just – some of the decision-making there by the offensive coordinator in that Chiefs game was very questionable. Just, you know, Lamar throwing the ball a lot instead of running the football when that's really their bread and butter. Um, but, you know, Anthony Weaver, I think he's an okay candidate. None of these guys are home runs, man. This definitely is disappointing. And it's not Adam Peters' fault. Did he put his eggs in, in, in one basket for Ben Johnson? Possibly. But I'm not going to say that he did. But Ben Johnson definitely, definitely um, not choosing us. Definitely hurt. And it kind of looks like, I'm not going to say caught with their pants down. But, you know, or just caught not ready for a move after. But, man, it just looks like the, the rest of the candidates are just very underwhelming. But at the same time, I, I will say the positives about Dan Quinn, just preparing myself to have a positive mindset for whoever we hire. Dan Quinn has shown that he was able to take a team to a Super Bowl. Anthony Weaver, associate head coach, coach uh, the D-line for the Ravens, just involved with a great organization. Aaron Glenn, I'm a little iffy on him. The Lions defense was just was not good in, in uh, stopping the pass game last year. So he's really probably the last on my list out of the three guys. But man, I really want a Bobby Slogan. I really want a Ben Johnson, one of those two. But they're they're just they're just not they 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 decided to go back. But um yeah, so it it, it it is crazy. And then I saw the report this morning that Mike McDonald's wife was a was a skins cheerleader and that she's a fan of all this stuff. Everybody's going crazy and like, oh, he might actually come here. But of course, 
that's not the case at all. So, uh, but yeah, Seattle, they didn't play around. And like I said, man, he, he it looks like he just chose a team that has a little bit more established players here. And uh, he's going to get a six-year deal with Seattle, man. That's a darn good deal, man. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. I'm going to see. We'll see how much he gets paid as well. Uh, Mike Phillips tweeted out, Glenn and Weaver last week, they didn't leave with any of the three. I'm, I'm not of the, this is a disaster camp, but it's tough to explain that you got your top guy when you let him sit for 24, 24 to 48 hours. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they could have, yeah, it, 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 it's just tough. It, it really is tough um, here. Um, I'm almost speechless. I'm almost, I did not think in the, in the next, um, a couple of weeks with all the Ben Johnson, it's a lock, it's a lock, it's a lot talk that we would end up with this situation, man. It, it really is. I did not think that this would come to this at all. But like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be doom and gloom here. If it's Dan Quinn, we just gotta live with it. I don't want to be like the Texans where they just hire guys and fire them each year until they found the right guy with D'Amico Ryan's. But it could be that situation. A lot of people are, you know, kind of down on Adam, Adam Peters right now because he's keeping Marty, Marty Ernie, and Mark Mayu around. And then we don't find the coach. But I think it's just too early to be critical, overly critical of Adam Peters at this point. But like I said, I mean, the positives with Dan Quinn, you saw what he did with Dallas' defense. I know they were terrible in the playoffs, but he did a good job with them. And like I said, I'm just mentally preparing myself with Dan Quinn. I'm just, I'm just, I have to mentally prepare myself. I just have to do it um, and, and look at it in a, in a positive way. And then, you know, he had Matt Ryan, Julio Jones. Um, some really good players with the Falcons, too. So I just had to mentally prepare myself for that to happen and be positive here, guys. I don't want to be doing with gloom. So, all right, you guys. You guys let me know what you guys think. Health commanders. We'll see what happens in the next 24 to 48 hours. Hopefully, hopefully they get this done and make a decision. I know they wanted them to – the NFL probably wants them to get this done before the Super Bowl week. I know that for sure. They don't want this to linger into the Super Bowl week. They want everybody to just focus on the Super Bowl. They do not want people focusing on the commander's head coaching search. Now, they are in Mobile, Alabama. They've already done all the interviews that they can do. So I think it's just time to really just make a decision from here, you know. All right, you guys. Just let me know what you guys think. Health Commanders. Peace.